So when Pat sent me a link for 30,000, <laughs> I drove the car, the chassis got a bit of sound, I bought the car. <laughs> Good morning, today is a very exciting day. Today, Pat and I are going to be at the launch ceremony of Jack Cars. So at the launch today, we are also launching not just uh, the ambassadors, which are Xiao Tie and Ryan, they're also right, but we are also launching a new EV lease program, which I think was quite interesting because our old car, which was very noisy in the old vlogs, <laughs> left one year plus and so we were in the market to just go and cc some cars over some quick math i realized that if i lease with this ev program right i maybe pay three four hundred dollars more as compared to getting a brand new car la. but i don't need down payment and it's one year so if i regret going the ev route i just give back at the end of the year if you want to drive a car for one two years to see how especially if it's an ev then them solid, confirm save money. That's all compared to buying a new car. I always leave this kind of things to John and for him to say that it makes sense to lease, it got me thinking and then I did the math as well because again, I trust the numbers more than anything. You don't need to fork out the down payment at the start which you can use it to go and earn higher interest in the current uh, interest rate environment. After we come, come, come. Makes sense. Makes sense. So that's how Jack Cars happened. So I'll see you at the launch. On the wheel. Oh. Yeah, okay, this 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 is, uh, they find his entire Instagram trying to find the most handsome one is this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ceremony now that we're gonna press this button. It's as though we are like the mayor like that. <laughs> Launch! Okay guys, so first look of the car. Hi BYD! Open the sunroof. Whoa! Wait, wait. Hey, hey. Wow, they just nice put the angle so you won't stand up. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> Press from the steering wheel. This one? I don't know. Whoa. 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 Also, mm. behind you, uh, got one weird. Weird, weird susu. This is a susu. This is a paparazzi. Sumi, sumi. I'm the default driver most of the time, so I'm honestly very excited to start driving this car because I've heard a lot of perks about driving an EV and the only thing that I'm scared of is to charge the car. I think I need to go down to the machine and see how to charge the car but this car is a building! Oh. Okay, this is the first drive by Pelly Cakes. Bye! Bye! Safety. Bye, Shams! Hi! Wow, wow, wow! What you doing? We are charging our car for the first time. And we are MBS okay. and there's a lot of lots for EV cars. So this is one of the perks that for driving an EV. I'm gonna show you how many lots MBS cater for EV. There's a total of like 305 to 317 uh, parking lots lah. As in, yeah, you count the numbers. So many! So if you drive an EV, you confirm got a lot. So I just got back from the office after freshly installing the OBU. I'm waiting for Dan. Dan wants to come and see it now. Wow, very nice lay your car. Oh, yeah, thank you. Nice Welcome car. to a uh, John Dan course. You got questions now? Nah? Huge amount of questions. Like what the hell is this thing? This thing uh, can play take me home. Like country road take me home. It's an actual guitar. It's still one. It's a key. No way. I'm guessing this means it. Wow. Oh, yeah. Way. I tell you the most ridiculous thing about this. They made this shortcut on the on the oh. steering wheel, but there's no reason, one. There's no reason <laughs> to have to rotate this mid drive. How annoying is it that all the buttons now like icon is all touch screen? It's not that irritating because there's voice command for the car. So you also said there's an app, so that means that you can turn on your car on the way to the car. Like Correct, out. you can do it on the remote also. And when you turn on the aircon, it doesn't unlock the car. <gasps> yeah, so it's just on aircon. Wow, yeah. that's so bad for the environment. But it's, then, so bad. it's so bad. But it's so good because it's electric. <laughs> it's electric. We couple to work. Sure, sure. <laughs> Over there, do you see it? Interesting. I think the wires are a little bit more concealed than I imagine. Yeah. But I can't imagine having to stretch here all the time whenever like, say you got some parking lots, right? You have uh. to manually pay your card. Solid question. So I, I, I also asked about it, right? There was a press release that came out a few days ago okay. that with every OBU installed, they're gonna give you a free Nets card. So not bad. La. So you just have one loose. La, for, for Correct. So okay, my theory is this. Basically, right, you don't have to put it there. 
There's many, many options. Oh. You can pretty much put it anywhere in a vehicle as long as your vehicle allows. There's no regulation. So like here also can? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's just that if there's a way to conceal the wires up here, the OBU itself must be connected to your ignition point. So you must see the obstacle course. Yeah, mm-hmm. because when you when you start your car, that thing must on. So if you want to put it on the driver's cockpit, right, it has to have three screws. It cannot use the adhesive tape, which is right now we are using adhesive tape adhesive tape over here. In case it drops and then it gonna your accelerator, <laughs> then we all pass away, right? Fair enough. Ah, fair, fair, enough. fair enough. So the trade-off or the fear some people might have is that you need to you need to drill three holes. Not you lah, the workshop lah. Huh? People feel like, well, I drill hole then how mm. and not nice. But I mean, the way I see is that if you drill a hole, the OB is gonna be there forever anyway. Yeah. So it's not like you will ever then see that three hole. Then you never ever need to deal with if it drops or if you accidentally kick it, then then you drop. The trick is that if you're worried about resale value, right? You see what everyone, what was the popular place for? Ah, so people like me, right? Mm. That uh, because I'm on a lease program for this car, right? Mm. I decided that I don't want to drill. I want to use adhesive. So that if I return the car, even though this is a long term lease, if they want to change place, then they go and change place. Understood. Okay. And my logic is this. You see whether it makes sense. Ah. Okay. With an uh, extra cash card, that car actually, you don't really need to touch it on it. You auto top up already. Ma. By the way, if you all don't know, ah, you can do auto top up. On your cash good. card. Yeah. Or you can even link it to your credit card. Correct. Uh, then you, you, do. you don't even need to touch it. So you just need a separate cash card for those outdated uh, car park entries. But you need to do on off, right? So for example, you go wedding, then you need to disable your. Usually you'll pull out your cash card a bit, then you go and tap the complimentary pass. So you can turn off. Oh! Yeah. Hey, you baller, you know. I've never had more than $20 in my cash card before. You have $100. No, I tell you why, because had. I mean, it's pet top up one, it's one. Uh-huh. And the other one is that when pet uses the car, she go office, CBD parking. One day, you get how much? 25. 47. What? Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. So their season parking is like 400, 600, right? Then it's like, what cheap, eh? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so that screen is optional. You can choose not to. You can replace it with a handphone. But this one's not bad. Just now when I drive and got speed camera, it just tells me speed camera hit. It told me that even before my GPS told me that. No, so what are other places that you can put? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Many people want to put, put here. Mm. Okay, I couldn't because in order to drill, right, you must be able to take it out. Then you can bolt the back mark. Ah. So this one is one whole piece. So you can is can, but you need to take out this whole thing. Yeah. So means cannot lah. The other option is where I put it over here, and the third option is under the glove box compartment. On the logic that you don't have to touch it, then it's really concealed lah. Also not that lah. You can see the tip of it lah. Okay. Because you don't want it so far back mark. Mm. But uh, that's where I found it's possible to do it here. Okay, so if you all do it here uh, and your workshop can do it, uh, there was a BYD person there and I asked whether it will void warranty. It will not. Yeah, because you are not screwing the machinery of the car or the system of the car. So it's similar to painting your car in a sense. With this episode, I also wanted to talk about the price of car ownership. Hey, bear in mind, both of us bought our car about the same time, right? A great time. How much you bought your car? I bought it for 50k, 6 years left. I bought 30k at 5 years left. Uh, it was a 10 year old car. Yeah. And then back then, COE price was like a manageable. When I first bought the car, it was post-COVID, right? And I was going through a midlife crisis. I don't know why you noticed. You know lah, right? That period. My personality or most people might post on Instagram to talk about first car, like milestone. Even though it's a second-hand 10-year-old Suzuki Swift, still like yeah. mad proud of yourself, you There'll know? It'll be a long story. Like my mom is so proud of me. Like when I bought that old little shit car, right? Yeah. Which I love. But then I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to because it was, even though I was very happy, I proud of myself, right? But also a period where I know car ownership in Singapore is quite stupid. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, we've been talking about buying a car like three, four years before we actually bought the car. And I remember it was during COVID also. It was like just after COVID. So I like, I feel like at the time, I, I don't know, some people might be losing their jobs and stuff. Then why are you going to buy a car? So I never did post about it. And now we're doing an entire video on this car. <laughs> hey, be happy for me, guys. It's a huge achievement. I want to say it is quite stupid at that point of time, like, especially you get it. But I bought the car because you cycled me. No, he cycled me to buy the car. Oh. It's he and Pat that will send me links of cars at good prices. Even I tell you that Suzuki Swift, right? It was a time uh, where I know uh, I don't want to spend more than 30k. And, and so below 30k, right? You don't have option one. Your car will just, you know, it looks like a, like a, like, you know, it just looks like that. <laughs> So it was quite quite demoralizing. <laughs> so it was quite easy for me to say, yeah, I don't want, I don't want. We cannot afford car, we cannot afford car. Because if we can only afford this car, then I'd rather do on car. You know that kind of thing. All the way until Pat sent me uh, this link on, on SG Car Mart. 
It was a white color Suzuki Swift with black top. And it was 20k. I went to meet the fuller. I drove his car. The car drove well. It left three years, 10 months, okay? But the aircon not very cold. So I asked him whether I can bring it to a workshop. And he said, can. And so the guy told me, uh, the price to fix will be about like $60 problem. Negligible. Or a $500 problem. But in the grand scheme of buying a car. Negligible. Negligible. But back then, I don't own a car. Man, and $500 is a stupid amount of money. Man. And so I said, how about we do... 19,750. So that guy is like, mm, let me think about it. So two days later, I texted him. I said, hey, how? He said, I sold it. Did you see? He sold it at 21k. And so what? By then, I super formal because I I've driven the car. I went to the workshop with the car. So I invested already. Eh. So now, shit, I want a white Suzuki suit with black dog. Black <laughs> and then I went to Ashi Kamat. I found the same car because a dealer bought the car. I saw the car, it was listed at 24 now. So someone bought to resell. You see these dealers? I DM the dealer. I said 24K, I buy now. Back my 20K, I'm like, how about 900, okay? You wanted to save $250. Correct, correct. So 24K, I buy now. He said, bro, sorry, I sold away this morning. By then, uh, I have lost the same car twice already. <laughs> I really want a white Suzuki suit with black top, eh. So when Pat sent me a link for 30,000. <laughs> <laughs> I drove the car. The chassis got a bit of sound. I bought the car. <laughs> Well, f- come, bro. You need to spend 2k fixing the car. <laughs> Story of how I bought my first Suzuki Swift. <laughs> I actually did the math on this lease program. So I mathed it, right? Actually, mm. before we even decide to work together, I actually went to see the Eto Tree. We, we talked about this, right? Beautiful car. It was about 1,700, 1,008. If you buy a brand new Eto Tree, which you want to, because like, EV, ma, then battery condition, you never really know. So you want to start from scratch. That's our government grant now, by the way. It was 170 plus K and you have to pay down payment. In Singapore, car down payment is 30%, uh, which is about 50K, 50 plus K. That's how much my car was. Yeah. No, like, can buy two of my... <laughs> That's the 30% down payment. Then after that, I worked out the installment plus interest to be about 1,006, 1,007. A month. Wow. A month. Okay, bear in mind, my Suzuki is 500. And then we need to average out, ma. So especially if you are a new car owner like us, then you will you have to buy comprehensive insurance that costs True. about 1,007. Um, for my previous car, the road tax was 1,000, 2,004. Then you have to settle all the maintenance. Servicing. Correct. Twice a year. Then there's parking, ERP and all that stuff. So Pat and I joined the the plug and drive program and, and we are renting lah basically we don't own this car hence my OBU is sticked on because I don't want to drill a car that's not mine so basically right you after I add in all that right I agar that I will pay about 2.5 ish k a month to own a car mm. if I bought a brand new car by myself so for this if this plug and drive program with Jack Cars right if I lease it for 12 months you can lease for 6 months 3 months then it's, it's more expensive oh very right? Um, but for this 12 months one, it's 2,888 per month. Oh. Yeah. It's expensive. Uh. Once again, car ownership in Singapore is expensive. But you have to get past that uh, if you want to own the car, right? 2,008, which is a $300 plus difference from the estimate of if I bought my own car. Mm. Plus, I don't need to downpay 50000 know, 50,000. That's, That's a huge deal. Yeah, which I think is solid. Uh, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, people talk about if you buy a brand new car, you can still flip. You can sell to buy your next car. Sure. I will just use the 50K that I didn't spend. <laughs> to get the next car. La. Because cars don't appreciate ma. And then that, that's how I derive this value. La. The whole point of this program is for people that want to test EV but then scared, scared don't have to commit the kind. So they will, they go and do and drive for three months, six months, one year and see whether you like it or not. It's a good deal, man. Huh? I meffed it. I meffed it. Once again, I'm not recommending you to buy a car. Okay? Like, hold off for as long as possible. But I went, I went to a Sydney. I think we went to the same Sydney event once. They say that you must earn at least $7,000 to buy the cheapest car. Yeah. Which back then was a Vios for 70 k or 60 k So right now when car prices are more than double there, especially if you want to get something slightly fancier. You may be basically no need to buy a car already. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I think if like if you weren't planning to get a car to begin with, this is not gonna solve your problem. But mm. if you were already thinking of getting a car and you want you want something to help you with like cash flow or whatnot, right? It's actually quite a good option. Because yeah. you're not like so you, you don't I'm right the now. brand ambassador. No 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 but you I, don't pedal my brand. I have been okay. thinking about it. Oh, I also <laughs> I also hoping that cars will come in. Yeah, hey, no, no, hey, 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 <laughs> too much. Hey. So I sold the car and I thought the day I sold the car I'll be very sad. It's your first car? Yeah, it's my first car and, and I felt nothing. Huh? And then when I met the buyer, right, the moment I hand him the keys, right, I left the car and then I saw him drive off with my car. Then I suddenly, at that moment, I was alone. Then I felt damn sad. Eh. I felt damn sad. I felt like I sold my son. Eh. Wow. Then I turned around and I saw Jack cars. Then the Eto 3 <laughs> Then I smiled. <laughs> 
Okay, we're gonna go to work now. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it or learned something, uh, drop us a comment and let me know what you think. Also, subscribe to this channel if you haven't because like more than half of you all watching are not subscribed. So please do. We're gonna go work now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.